Hi everyone and welcome to Big Data Hadoop Developer Course offered by Simply Learn. Now in this lesson we'll be doing the introduction to Big Data and Hadoop and we'll provide an introduction to Big Data. Furthermore, it'll introduce Hadoop as a Big Data technology. After completing this lesson you will be able to explain data explosion and the need for Big Data, explain the concept of Big Data, describe the basics of Hadoop, and describe the history and milestones of Hadoop. Explain how to use Oracle VirtualBox to open a VM. Over the last decade, there's been an incredible explosion of data in just about every sector. It's estimated that over 2.5 exabyte or 2.5 billion gigabytes of data is generated daily from various sources. That's a lot of data. Now, here are some of the sources of this big data explosion. A large stock exchange, such as the New York Stock Exchange, generates more than one terabyte of data daily. Worldwide, there are approximately 5 billion mobile phones in use. Of these, nearly 1.75 billion are estimated to be smartphones. YouTube users upload more than 48 hours of video every minute. Every second of HD video generates bytes 2,000 times more than that required to store a single page of text. Large social networks like Twitter and Facebook generate more than 10 terabytes of data daily. There are more than 30 million networked sensors in the world and each of them transmits data continuously. There are three primary types of data. The first is structured data which can be represented in a tabular format and stored in relational databases like MySQL, Oracle Database and DB2. The second one is semi-structured data, which doesn't have a formal data model, though it may have some semblance of a structure. For example, XML files represent semi-structured data. Now the third is unstructured data, which doesn't have a predefined data model. Text files, web logs, and machine logs are good examples of unstructured data. Did you know that according to an estimation, approximately 90% of the world's data has been created in the last two years? It includes 10% of structured data and 80% of unstructured data that are difficult to analyze. The structured formats, such as databases, have limitations while handling large data sets, and there's difficulty in integrating distributed information. Furthermore, most business users aren't aware of the requirements during IT system development. Potentially valuable data for varied systems like enterprise resource planning or ERP and supply chain management or SCM are either dormant or discarded forming a data puddle within enterprises. It's often too expensive to justify the integration of large volumes of unstructured data. Therefore, big data is needed to analyze and integrate the enterprise's large data sets, irrespective of the data types. Big data is a broad term for large or complex data sets that are difficult to be sorted using on-hand data management tools or traditional data processing applications. Various sources of big data are web logs, social media, sensor networks, internet text, pages and documents, search index data, atmospheric science, astronomy, biochemical, medical records, scientific research, military surveillance, and photography archives. Here are the characteristics of big data. Variety encompasses managing the complexity of data in different structures ranging from relational data to logs and raw text. Velocity accounts for managing the streaming of data and the movement of voluminous data at a high speed. Volume denotes managing the huge scaling of data ranging from terabytes to zettabytes. Voluminous data is useless without accuracy as incorrect data causes concern in organizations. Veracity manages accuracy of data and its analyses, especially in automated decision-making process. Data veracity is essential if the organization aims to be information-centric. And here are more characteristics of big data. Big data is variable, which means the meaning of the data is constantly changing. This makes it relevant in sentiment analyses. To perform a proper sentiment analyses, algorithms need to understand the context and decipher the exact meaning of a word in that context. Visualization makes voluminous data comprehensible. With correct analyses and visualizations, raw data can be used. 
Visualizations mean complex graphs that can include variables of data while still remaining understandable and readable. The value of data is in analyses, which turns data into information, followed by knowledge. Based on data value, organizations can become information-centric. Big data technology helps to respond to the big data characteristics. Now here are the three characteristics of big data technology. Firstly, it helps to cost-effectively process the growing volumes of data. For example, per IBM, big data technology has helped to turn the 12 terabytes of tweets created daily into improved product sentiment analysis. It has converted 350 billion annual meter readings to predict power consumption better. The second characteristic of big data technology is that it helps to respond to the increasing velocity of data. For example, it's scrutinized 5 million trade events created daily to identify potential frauds. It's helped to analyze 500 million daily call detail records in real time to predict customer churn faster. The third characteristic of big data technology is that it helps to collectively analyze the widening variety of data and handles failure of isolated nodes and tasks assigned to such nodes. It can also turn data into actionable insights. For example, it's helped to monitor hundreds of live video feeds from surveillance cameras to target points of interest for security agencies. It has also been able to exploit the 80% data growth in images, videos, and documents to improve customer satisfaction. According to Gartner, big data is a high-volume, high-velocity, and high-variety information asset that demands cost-effective, innovative forms of information processing for enhanced insight and decision-making. Big data technology enables IT to leverage multiple sources of data. Now, the major sources of data include application data, which has high volume and throughput, and it's structured. Machine data, which has high velocity, is semi-structured and needs to be ingested at a high speed. Social data, which has high variety, is unstructured and requires you to establish the veracity of the data. Enterprise data, which has variety, is available in different formats like PDFs, spreadsheets, and documents. It's highly unstructured and can be voluminous. Here are the requirements of the traditional IT analytics approach and its challenging factors. The traditional IT analytics approach requires the business team to define questions before IT development. Furthermore, the team needs to predefine the data sources and structures. The business team's usually challenged if it has iterative and volatile requirements or if data sources keep changing. Let's now look at the process involved in traditional IT analytics approach. In a scenario of traditional IT systems development, the requirements are defined first. This is then followed by the solution design and build. Once the solution is implemented, queries are executed. If there are new requirements or queries, the system is redesigned and rebuilt. Here are the requirements and the challenging factors that have to be overcome for using big data technology as a platform for discovery and exploration. The big data technology approach requires the business team to define data sources and establish a hypothesis. Big data technology should enable explorative analysis. The IT team should integrate data systems and sources as required based on new business questions and the hypotheses. Let's now look at the process involved in big data technology approach. At the outset, the initial data sources are identified. The IT team creates a platform for creative exploration of available data and content. The business team then determines the questions to ask and tests their hypotheses. Any new question leads to the addition and integration of data sources without the need to redesign and rebuild the platform. Big data technology helps to understand and navigate big data sources, manage and store a huge volume of various data, process data in a reasonable time, ingest data at a high speed, analyze unstructured data, and bear faults and exceptions. Okay, now big data technology appeals to various sectors and it's used for a variety of use cases. Per Cloudera, the technology has found uses in industries such as automotive, communications, consumer packaged goods, financial services, education and research, high technology and industrial manufacturing, life sciences, media and entertainment, online services and social media, 
healthcare, oil and gas, retail, travel and transportation, utilities, and law enforcement and defense. Now, there are two key challenges to be addressed by big data technology. These are handling the system uptime and downtime and combining data accumulated from all systems. To overcome the first challenge, big data technology uses commodity hardware for data storage and analysis. Plus, it helps to maintain a copy of the same data across clusters. To overcome the second challenge, big data technology analyzes data across different machines and then merges that data. Hadoop helps to leverage the opportunities provided by big data and overcome the challenges it poses. Let's now look at the definition of Hadoop and its requirement. Hadoop is an open source Java-based programming framework that supports the processing of large data sets in a distributed computing environment. It's based on Google File System or GFS. The next question to be addressed is why Hadoop is used. Hadoop runs a number of applications on distributed systems with thousands of nodes involving petabytes of data. It has a distributed file system called the Hadoop Distributed File System or HDFS, which enables fast data transfer among the nodes. Furthermore, it leverages a distributed computation framework called MapReduce. Hadoop originated from the Nutch Open Source Project on search engines and works over distributed network nodes. In 2003 and 2004, Google released two papers that provided insight into their success, the Google File System, or GFS, and MapReduce, Simplified Data Processing on Large Clusters. The papers told the world how Google performed large-scale data processing. In July 2005, Nutch used GFS to perform MapReduce operations. In February 2006, Nutch started a Lucene subproject which led to the era of Hadoop. In April 2007, Yahoo started using Hadoop on a 1,000 node cluster. In January 2008, Apache took over Hadoop and made it a top level project. In July 2008, a 4,000 node cluster with Hadoop was tested by Apache. The performance of that cluster was surprisingly the fastest when compared to the other technologies implemented that year. In May 2009, a test revealed that Hadoop successfully sorted a petabyte of data in 17 hours. Hadoop reached version 1.0 in December 2011. It is open source and written in Java. On May 23, 2012, Hadoop 2.0.0 was released, which delivers significant features, including YARN, high availability for HDFS, HDFS Federation, HDFS snapshots, NFSV3 access to data in HDFS, support for running Hadoop on Microsoft Windows, binary compatibility for MapReduce applications built on Hadoop 1.x, and substantial integration testing with the rest of the projects in the ecosystem. The current version of Hadoop is 2.7.1. It was released on the 6th of July, 2015. It is completely open source and written in Java. Yahoo was the first company to design and use Hadoop as a core part of their system operations. Now Hadoop is a core part of systems at internet companies such as Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and many enterprise organizations, such as J.P. Morgan and Chevron. VMware Player is a free software package offered by VMware Incorporated used to create and manage virtual machines. The VMware Player can be downloaded for personal use from the URL mentioned here. The image here shows you where to access Cloud Lab from. Click Lab Access to get the screen similar to the image here. The basic hardware requirements for working on VMware Player are as follows. 1 GHz processor to support Intel VT or virtualization technology, 1 GB of RAM, and 150 MB hard disk to install the application. However, it is recommended that you have a 2 GHz processor and 4 GB of RAM for optimum performance. The Oracle Virtual Box is used to open virtual machines. Apple Macintosh users use the free VM player as the VMware Fusion player is available only for trial or limited usage. Download the latest version of VirtualBox compatible with your machine and firewall settings from the URL mentioned here. 
Now let's summarize the topics we talked about in this lesson. Big data is a term applied to data sets that cannot be captured, managed, and processed within a tolerable elapsed and specified time frame by commonly used software tools. Big data relies on volume, velocity, and variety with respect to processing. Data can be divided into three types, unstructured, semi-unstructured, and structured data. Big data technology understands and navigates big data sources, analyzes unstructured data, and ingests data at a high speed. Hadoop is a free Java-based programming framework that supports the processing of large data sets in a distributed computing environment. This concludes Introduction to Big Data and Hadoop. In the next lesson, we're going to focus on Hadoop architecture.